Good morning, everybody. Well, I don't think there's a lot left to do on this project, so what I need to do is figure out how to attach this top. And I'm also not really sure what I want to do with this top. Like I kind of said at the beginning of this project, I was kind of entering this with the idea of this is more of a, a prototype than anything, which is why I'm using this plywood. I think I'm still going to attach this and see how it all works. And if I like everything, it's just gonna be screwed on there. I can replace that with solid wood, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I think what I wanna do is clamp this down just so, so I don't have to commit myself to anything. Yeah, here you can see what's happening is this rounded area here is bumping against that top. I don't even have that clamp tightly down there. So I just need to take a little bit off of there. I had a feeling I would have to do that. So that seems to be working pretty well. So what I want to do now is just see if I can center this whole assembly on the table. Now I can see if my weeks and weeks of hard work have paid off. Well, at least a, a day or two. So the next challenge here is gonna to be to get this level because it looks like it would have to be about there. That's not good. I'm experimenting with this stop right here, this little cleat. That's where I want that cleat to go, but here's the problem. Now it's not even. So, that looks closer to what it should be. Let's see. So you know what I think I gotta do? I think I need to just cut off a little bit on these two legs to just bring that down a little bit. I'm not sure how this got off. It looks like it's a three quarters of an inch off, which is the same length that I had the difference between the inside and the outside leg. So maybe they should have been the same length. I'll have to cut that down and then I'll adjust it in the plans. The only thing I, I think that I might have been thinking on the plans was the placement of this cleat. I think I might have had it coming out further. What I want to do is just match these legs. I'm not really sure why I did that to begin with. Fingers crossed here. Got it. It's all I needed to do. I should have made all those legs the same length. It's actually, it's perfect right there. I'll round over the edges of the top. I'm gonna protect this with three coats of spray lacquer. Well, it took a little bit of fussing with, but in the end, I think it worked out pretty well. It's all level and it's nice and sturdy. It turned out to be a good kind of problem solving project. Hey, I wanted to let you guys know that I really love reading your comments and I wanted to let you know that I actually do read them. I wish I could respond to all of them, but it's just simply not possible, especially in this daily video format. It's probably a little unusual for YouTubers these days, but I still develop my own projects and plans and build the projects. I write and shoot and I edit the videos all myself. But 
It's your comments and suggestions and general good mood that helps keep me motivated and I just wanted to thank you for being so awesome. One of the most common questions I and really all woodworkers and makers get is why? Why would I bother spending all this time and effort making a folding table when I could just as easily buy one, probably a lot cheaper? It's an honest and fair question and one that applies to just about any project that I make on this channel. I've given this a lot of thought over the years and the best answer I can come up with is I build because I can. A common misconception that a lot of us have when we're beginning a new hobby is this kind of quaint notion that we could save money by making it ourselves. For most of human history, this was probably the case. With you know a few basic tools, you could cut down your own trees and, and build a log cabin out on the frontier. If you had limited resources, it made far more financial sense to sew your own clothes rather than buy new ones. I think it's almost in our DNA, this notion that we're more resourceful and frugal when we make our own things. The Industrial Revolution changed all that to the point where today it rarely makes financial sense to make things yourself. Look, you are not going to save money by making your own furniture. If I need a new dresser, I'll probably just buy one if making one doesn't interest me that much. I've bought plenty of furniture from Ikea over the years, and you know what? It's fine. It looks nice, it functions well, and it serves its purpose. I used to think that it was somehow shameful for a woodworker to admit that, but today I'm actually proud of it. Because for me, IKEA reflects a deeper understanding of what woodworking means to me as a hobby. Buying factory-made furniture frees me to explore what I'm really intrigued by and interested in learning. I mean, even Gordon Ramsay has admitted to loving an In-N-Out burger. I don't feel any obligation or chore to build something that I need, but instead I focus on building things I want. And I don't mean to single out IKEA, they're just one example of probably 99% of the factory-made yet highly functional furniture you can buy at super affordable prices today. Most of IKEA's contemporary style and design looks pretty cool in just about any home. But of course the knee-jerk reaction for most of us woodworkers, myself included for a long time, is that factory knockdown furniture is poorly built junk and I wouldn't be caught dead with it in my house. But in reality, it's all pretty durable. The coffee tables function as tables and the chest of drawers store clothes just fine. Even with daily use, IKEA furniture will last you for years. The question is really, do I want to buy one coffee table and use it for the rest of my life? I mean, most of us like change and variety. Does your living room look exactly the same as it did 20 years ago? Do you even want it to? There's no debate that something handmade out of solid wood can last for centuries, easily outlasting anything made with MDF, particle board, and plastic laminates. But there's a deeper reason so many people are discovering woodworking as a hobby. And I think it goes back to that DNA I was talking about, a certain innate desire to create. Don't get into woodworking thinking that you're gonna save money. It will almost always be cheaper to buy something rather than make it. Build things that you really want to build, not things that you necessarily need to build. I mean, sure, sometimes the two things happen to be the same, but lean in on the projects that you wanna make rather than the ones that you need to make. Remember that dictionary stand I had out here that I was showing you? I mean, there is no way I needed a dictionary stand, but the idea intrigued me and that project posed some fascinating challenges. Making things affords us the luxury to spend a lot of time in our own heads. Every day in the workshop is a series of challenges and mental gymnastics. We have to imagine what a project will look like before touching a single tool. Even if you build something based on someone else's design or plans, your project will be different and unique. You'll need to select lumber based on your own personal preferences. You may need to adjust the dimensions to fit your own personal space. You'll need to figure out a plan of action to determine how you're going to approach the project and the, the tools and techniques that you'll need for the project. And while making your project, you're going to experience setbacks, sometimes devastating mistakes that make you want to just scrap the entire project. You'll get frustrated. You won't have a tool that you need. You'll split a board. Something, sometimes nothing seems to fit squarely. 
You cut a board too short, you'll glue the wrong pieces together, you'll make excuses, there will be aspects of every project that you regret. You'll be embarrassed by the quality of projects that you made just five years ago. And through all this, you'll find ways to somehow make your project work. You'll discover brilliant ways to solve problems and you'll have spent hours alone in your own space, in your own head. You will look at that dining table differently than every guest who sits down with you for dinner. They'll marvel at the craftsmanship. They probably never even met somebody who built their own dining table. But you'll see its flaws. You'll mostly remember the process from start to finish. You made that damn thing yourself. And that's why we build things, because we can. I'll see you guys tomorrow.